Major Richard Heiser returns from a six-hour flight over Cuba and lands his U-2 spy plane at McCoy Air Force Base in Orlando, Florida. The film is rushed to Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska and to the National Photographic Interpretation Center in Washington for analysis. Airman Michael Davis was a 23-year-old photo analyst stationed at Offutt. I walked into BB-12, which is where we briefed all the generals all the time. Major Olson was in there. He says, there's your table. He says, and here's the film. Let's get started about 1 o'clock in the morning. And I said, where's the circle? So we, we pulled, pulled down the screen, uh, and then the SAM circle appeared. I said, let's look in the center. We got something. After hours of scrutinizing the film, Davis comes across a series of long cylindrical shapes that look strangely familiar. At the NPIC in Washington later that morning, Dino Brugioni and the NPIC staff are coming to the same conclusion. We're seeing uh, eight objects 65 feet long. We're seeing two objects that are uh, 100 feet long. And these are alien to that environment. Brugioni and Davis have each made a find with grave implications. The measurements of the objects match perfectly with Soviet SS-4 medium-range ballistic missiles. Missiles that have nuclear warheads. And we were convinced that this was what we had was a field-deployed SS-4 uh, site. The Soviet SS-4 missile has a range of 2,000 miles. When launched from San Cristobal, Cuba, it can hit Washington, D.C., Baltimore, the Strategic Air Command headquarters in Nebraska, and the entire southeastern United States. As the men at NPIC look at the U-2 photos, they find another SS-4 site, then another. They work through the night until NPIC chief Art Lundahl comes in the next morning. Lundahl came in in the morning and he looked at them and he, uh, he kind of sighed. He said, uh, this is trouble. This is real trouble. NPIC Chief Art Lundell goes to the White House to brief President Kennedy and his National Security Council on the grim discovery. That meeting, like many others during the coming crisis, is secretly recorded by President Kennedy and only recently declassified. In the room with President Kennedy are Marshall Carter of the CIA, Defense Secretary Robert McNamara, Attorney General Robert Kennedy, National Security Advisor McGeorge Bundy and other top aides. The group became known as the Executive Committee of the National Security Council, or XCOM. This is a result of the photography taken to some days there. The medium range ballistic missile launch site and two new military encampments on the southern edge of the area of Rosario, west central Cuba. Who would that be? Uh, west central, sir. Right? The one side and one ear encampment contains a total of at least 14 canvas covered missile trailers measuring 67 feet in length. How do you know this is a medium range ballistic missile? The answer. The Soviets have made a bold move. The discussion turns toward a quick solution. Airstrikes to destroy the ballistic missile sites before they become operational. I think it's extremely important. Defense Secretary McNamara. Founded on this premise that any airstrike will be planned to take place prior to the time they become operational. Because if they become operational before the airstrike, I do not believe we can state we can knock them out before they can be launched. And if they're launched, there is almost certain to be uh, chaos in part of the East Coast or the area uh, in a radius of 600 to 1,000 miles from Cuba.